Dylan, that's obviously a great big win for you. And uh, how are you feeling just because, you know, you didn't actually make it to be one of the finalists of this season, but yet you put on just a huge display right there with that knockout? Uh, ever since I got on the Ultimate Fighter, I I, I didn't want to be a shadow in, in the... Um, in the series, I, I had to perform and I had to show people that I can fight, and um, and 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 I didn't make the finale, which was sad, which was something I really wanted to do. So I wanted to make a statement, given another opportunity, and I was given another opportunity to fight here, and I wanted to show them that I, I'm still hungry, no matter what happens. I will always be hungry. I'll always drive, and I'll always try to be here. I think that's a lot reflected on your record, where you have, I believe, now that's your 15th finish overall, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I, I try to be confident and humble at the same time and, and just be persistent, be persistent in life. Uh, had you ever thought about auditioning or did you for the Australia um, and versus UK Ultimate Fighter? Yeah, I did audition and I didn't make it um, for whatever reason. Um, you know, I, I, I look back and, and everything in my life that happened happened for a reason. Uh, I didn't make the smashes because I wanted to be on the, the the number one ultimate fighter of all time, and that was season 17. And um, so, you know. Can you tell me a little bit about the beard that's going on here? Did you uh, start growing that after the uh, season was over? Yeah, I did. And um, it kind of got, you know, like I, if, if I can keep a beard for more than two weeks, I'll, I'll probably keep it forever, you know, but I'm not keeping it forever because <laughs> my, my partner absolutely hates it. So um, I'll shave it off. And um, it, was, it really was just I got past the itchy stage, two week period, and then it just grew. Yeah. Uh, Karen Bryant was down for the Smashes finale, and uh, when she was there, she found out that uh, there's not necessarily a lot of love among all the MMA schools down there. There's, you know, they're very competitive. Just curious, what your thoughts are, and you know, of, of that, and you know, Tahuna and your other, uh, you know, New Zealanders. Yeah, I mean, um, me, me, and uh, Jamie Tahuna get on really well, and we train with each other a lot. Um, as far as the gyms go, yeah, there, there is. A lot of competitiveness amongst the gyms, you know. There's not a lot of good guys in the gyms, you know. So the ones that they do have, they try and hold on to, um, you know. But in saying that, my gym is that I'm at now with my coach at Puma is, is very welcoming and very open. And we're probably one of the few that, you know, allow people to come in and, and vice versa. So, um, you know, I have been to a lot of gyms and that seems to be the, you know, the thing on gyms in Australia, yeah. You know, watching Tough, it was very inspiring to see your relationship with uh, Coach uh, Coach Stonehorse. Um, can you talk about that and what he meant to you? Uh, Stonehorse was a was a big impact on my time in the house. Um, more, you know, I, I my my father wasn't wasn't you know he he I guess he did what he thought he had to do in life, which was kind of just provide and not necessarily be there as a father figure. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm, I don't want to discredit him, and you know, he did what whatever he thought was right. Um, but to have an older person to look up to, and I, I really, I really warm to that. You know, so Coach Stonehorse was really like a, a big father figure in the house for me, um, and just just made me feel so good with confidence. You know, I mean, from day one, he was he was in my ear telling me I was the best. From day one to to after the URI fight, you know, till we left the house, I'm still the best. You're still the man. You can. Do this, you can do this, you know. And I, I believed it because it was genuine. I, I'm, I feel like I'm a good judge of character, and we, you know, we're both very tribal people. And you did, you did well on the show, and um, you know, obviously, you mentioned not making the finale. This is a time now uh, in the UFC where every roster spot is very important. Did you feel that you, you had to win this fight to continue uh, a career in the UFC? Oh yeah, for sure. There was a tremendous amount of pressure on me, you know. Um, this is where I want to be, and Jimmy is in my way, you know. And I don't. And Jimmy's style, you know. And I, and and by the same time, I don't want to discredit him. But people don't want to see someone holding somebody else down, you know what I mean? So I knew I had to make a fight of this. I can't let him control the fight so you know it was stay on my feet don't let him take me down if he does get back up and hit him and hit him and hit him and hit him and and just make it exciting for the people you know I mean I'm, I'm a fan of the UFC I've watched this for years I've watched what needs to be done here I know what needs to be done I know what Dana White I know what the UFC require and that's good fights and that's what I'm here for I'm here to put on fights I don't win or lose you know you're going to get a fight for me that's it
You you talked about that hunger. Do you feel that you maybe harness that better than maybe some other people? I mean, hunger can sometimes add to pressure. Pressure can add, you know, honestly, the possibility of making more mistakes. I mean, is hunger your fuel? Um, I just think failure is my fuel. I I can't. I you know I I can't quit at the site. I. You know, I've, I've said it on the show. I've had too many people around me that haven't chased their dreams. You know, might have had a dream but didn't chase it. You know, so my my message and and me as a person is to chase your dream and not just chase it but believe it. Going forward, you're an international fighter. You had your time in the Ultimate Fighter House, and you make relationships. Do you see yourself, you know, being more based out of the states? Do you go back to, to Australia? Where where do you see uh, your future really being based out of? I'll go wherever I need to go. You know, I'm very, I'm very comfortable back home. I'm, a, I'm a family man, and I, I feel happy, and I train at my best when I have my family around me. Um, I'm not a person who wants to leave my family for six, eight weeks. I can't do that. That'll drive me insane. You know, my kids are, are at the gym every day with me. You know, when you know, my daughter is with me every day. Um, my son is when he's not at school. You know, I, I feed off that, man. That people have. Whatever they have to fuel them, mine is family, man. Mine are kids, you know, my girlfriend. That's that's what drives me, man. Family. You talk about your family. What did you learn about yourself throughout this experience and, and going forward? How will you use it to, to better yourself as a fighter? Uh, I think, you know, um, being away from my family first thing is, is just appreciating them more, you know, appreciating what they do and the sacrifices that they make um, in order for me to pursue what I want to do, you know. Um, you almost have to be very selfish as a fighter to, to get anywhere, you know, and it's, it's okay to be selfish, but you have to recognize the things that people do for you around you, you know, and um, and that's what I do, and that's my drive. I'm curious if you had the family photo with you. I mean, we didn't get to see any in between rounds in this fight. I didn't know that picture that they kept bringing out during the episodes where you fought that would actually inspire you and seem to bring out a whole different Dylan. Was that at all on hand, uh, just in case you had to go to an in between rounds here? I wasn't sure if I was allowed or not, so what I did was I, I've, on my iPad, I've got my screen saver and it's got my family on it. I turned it on and I allowed myself six seconds to look at that photo. And once that was over, that was it, it was game time. So that, that that's it. I mean, that's what I fight for. That's what I fight for, man. So that's what I need. You know, if there's any doubt in my head, that's what you're doing it for. You sat down and you said, wow, this is different. You know, your career, you're in the UFC now, the whole experience, the build-up, tough, then going home, then training, then waiting. Now you're here. Now you won. Let's talk about the whole experience, what you're feeling. <sighs> you know, um... It's, it's, you know, you, you wake up, you, you know, you, you, you know, in your dream you won the lotto, and you wake up and you're like, oh, shit, oh, no, oh, sorry, that's weird. Um, you, you know, you want to go back to sleep. You know, this is what it feels like. It feels like something unbelievable has happened to me. And um, I just, oh, man, I don't know. <laughs> this is crazy, man. I mean, I, I, I just, I don't know, man. This I ride my skateboard down the beach with my kids and stuff like that with no one around, you know. I'm happy to just hang with my family, you know. And look at this, man. Far out. This is unbelievable. This is the best thing ever. I love it. Congrats, Thank, Thank you so you. much. Guys. You're Thanks. very welcome. Enjoy. Thank you.